coming up. Invent your own heat keeping teacup. Learn the secret of levitating limbs. How to stump a strong man with a puny little pencil. Then spear it straight through a water bag without spilling a drop. Now that I have to try. Stand back, Dana. I need a little space. Uh, speaking of space, slow down, Taryn. We have a real space story first, because Larissa's suddenly become moonstruck. I think the moon is amazing. Look, craters of all different shapes and sizes. I know meteors hurtle through space and slam into the moon. That's what makes craters. But why are some bigger than others? Is it just because some meteors are bigger? Or does their speed make a difference? Hey, you guys. That's my moon. You can't run off with my moon. <laughs> Give it back, you galaxy ceiling villains. I was in the middle of using that moon for something. Right, that's it. Game over for you two. Hey, it's left a crater in the sands. I've just thought of a way to find out why some moon craters are bigger than others. Come with me, you two space monkeys. Jordan, Nicole and Damon are doing their homework out in the garden. Hey, guys. You all look really bored. Come on, wake up. I want to show you my latest trick. I have a magic plastic bag that will never leak. I'm going to fill it up with some of this water. Now I'll seal up the top so it doesn't spill over. There! Now do you think I can fill this bag with holes and not spill a single drop of water? I'm going to take this pencil and stab it right through the bag. Just like this. Look, not a single drop has escaped. That was no fluke either. I can do it again. Easy. Now pencil number three goes through here. And still not a drop has leaked. One more. There, four pencils in the bag and the water just won't leak out. <laughs> the bag is made of plastic, which is quite stretchy. This is because its molecules are formed in long chains known as polymers. When the tip of the pencil goes through the side of the bag, it's really just slipping in between the stretchy chains of molecules. The molecules then seal back around the pencil so that no water comes out. See, I told you it was a magic bag. Here, you guys have a turn. I've got to go. Start by pulling out the pencils. Mm. All of a sudden I'm having second thoughts about this. And I think Larissa's been having some second thoughts too about what causes moon craters. When Michael threw my ball into the sand, a great idea hit me like a meteor. I thought of a way to find out why some moon craters are bigger than others. I just need to borrow a bit of sand from the beach. This is going to be the surface of my moon. We'll just smooth it all out so it's flat. I'll get Michael to spray the top with water. That'll make the top layer of sand stick together, a bit more like the moon's crusty surface. Those marbles are going to be our intergalactic meteors. We'll drop one each from three different heights. I'll stand on the bottom step and drop mine first. Now Tyna will drop hers from one step higher. That way it'll be moving slightly faster when it hits the sand. OK, now Michael will drop his from one step higher still. That'll be the fastest meteor. I knew it! Our meteors were all the same size, but the fastest meteor left the biggest crater. Now let's try bigger meteors. These golf balls are bigger and heavier. Meteors away! Yep, the larger meteors create bigger craters. What about when they hit the moon at an angle? Would it make a different shaped crater? 
let's prepare our moon surface for more testing. Now let's hit it with an angled meteor attack. The craters aren't as round as before. The impacts are not as round as before. They're wider and more oval shaped. They spread out as the meteor skids to a stop. A meteor is a rock travelling through space. It can leave a crater when it hits another object, such as the moon. The size of the meteor and the speed at which it is travelling does affect the size crater it leaves. On planet Earth, there are about 120 known meteor craters. So now we know what happens when meteors hit. I wonder whether any have hit around here. I'm going to go looking for my own meteor. Paul and I can't sit still for a minute before we set each other another challenge. Aha, uh -huh, the old arm wrestle. Ah! Nut is too strong. Paul wins that one every time. Back to the puzzles. I need a new challenge. Hey, this pencil. Yes. This pencil is as light as a feather. Let's see if Mr. Strongarm can hold it up for five minutes. Easy, he says. We'll just see. OK, the timer is on. Three minutes. His arm is starting to look heavy. I bet he can't make five minutes. That lightweight pencil is beginning to weigh him down. Four minutes. The next minute will be the real test. He's down! <laughs> now we're even. Holding your arm out for longer than five minutes is hard going because our body needs to supply extra blood to the muscles in the arm doing the work. And another thing. While Paul's muscle was working, something called lactic acid built up in his muscles, making his arm feel stiff and sore. Man, that really was some challenge. I think <laughs> Paul's arm wrestling days are over. Karen thinks he can hold his arm up longer than Paul did. We'll see about that. And while I'm waiting, I think I'll have a nice cup of tea, just like Grace. There's nothing better than a good book and a nice warm mug of tea. Oh, it's gone stone cold. Pete must have escaped out of the top for sure. And maybe through the sides. Right, time to invent the perfect heat keeping cup. I'll start by wrapping some shiny foil around one of my jars. Now I'll fill it up with warm water and pop the lid on. And I'll put some of the same warm water in this unprotected jar. Then I'll sit my heat keeping jar on a piece of cork inside the larger container. Inside it goes, and the lid goes on. Now we just have to wait a few minutes, then compare the temperature of the two lots of water. Right, back to my book. All right, time to check their temperatures. Wow, the unprotected jar is hardly warm at all now. Now for my heat keeping jar. Aha! It's still almost as warm as when I put it in. Grace's clever heat keeping ideas worked for several reasons. Most effective of all, the lid stopped water evaporating and taking heat away in the process. Next most helpful, the air gap between the jars stopped heat travelling outwards. In much the same way as the cork stopped heat leaking out the bottom of the jar. The shiny foil also helps by keeping reflected heat trapped inside the jar. My theory's worked. Now I know how to enjoy a really nice warm cup of tea. Now, where was I? <laughs> Aha, Rebecca's got my game. Right, she's not leaving this room until she hands it over. If I press my arms hard against the door, she'll never push past me. <laughs> hey! Darn, never thought about that getaway. Hey! What's happening to my arms? They're pressing up by themselves. That is so weird. They've never done it before. I wonder why. Let's see. 
I was standing with my arms pressed hard against the door for about a minute. Oh, there you go! It's happening again! It's like one of those magic tricks that you see on TV. It does look like a magician's levitation act, but this is a trick between your mind and your muscles. Jordan's brain tells his muscles to tense up so he can press against the door. When Jordan relaxes his arms, there is still tension stored in the muscles, causing his brain to send a signal to raise his arms. My muscles have mind of their own. And they've just helped me get my game back. Game over, Rebecca. Well, at least Jordan found his game. And I think Larissa might be about to find what she's been looking for too. If meteors can be really big and fast moving through space, maybe they can be very small too. They could even be tiny specks of dust. That gives me an idea. I'm going to go hunting for micrometeors. This screen has plenty of dust on it. Maybe there are some micrometeors on there. I'll brush them onto this white paper so they're easier to see. That should do it. Hmm, there are lots of tiny particles here. I can't tell if they've come from outer space just by looking at them. My trusty magnifying glass might help me. Yeah, some of the specks look shiny. I wonder if they're made of metal. I know some meteors have metals in them that are magnetic. So if I get my magnet, it might pick up any magnetic micrometeorites. Wow, some of them are sticking. Look at those. Could they be from space? Space dust and particles are constantly entering the Earth's atmosphere. A lot of this dust has been travelling in space for millions of years. Many of these particles travel through the Earth's atmosphere until they hit the ground. Wow! People spend millions of dollars looking for meteors in space. And all the time, tiny meteors were lying here right under my nose. Which all goes to show some of the coolest science happens in your own house. And we've got heaps more cool stuff ready and raring to go next time. See, See you then! then.